Thank you. It is such a great pleasure to see all of you here. I'm gratified to see our elected officials, our senator. Thank you so much, Ginny Pressler, head of the Department of Health. And, uh, and I saw Ellie Cochran here. I haven't seen anybody else from the council. <clears throat> what are you breathing? We're going to start with a few quotes. Smoke of any kind can aggravate an existing respiratory condition. Don't take my word for it. This is HCNS saying it. Particles that are small enough to get into the lungs can cause numerous health problems. This is from the United States Environmental Protection Agency. So today let's discuss what you're breathing. Many people have these burning questions. What are you breathing? What is in cane smoke? What is in cane ash? Should humans breathe cane smoke? The picture you see right here is when they said there was no ground level smoke. I've been to Los Angeles, it's not this bad. These are children choking at Kamali Elementary School. This is about the children. I'm sure we can all agree you have a right to clean air. So, is this clean air? No. Okay, this is about science. I'm going to try to be dispassionate tonight and tell you about science. So here's a little, a little particle pollution primer from the United States Environmental Protection Agency. Aerosols, which I used to measure for NASA, that's how I first came here, are particles suspended in the air. They aren't necessarily bad. Particle pollution, aka particulate matter or PM, refers to microscopic particles in the air released by open burning things that are a ten-thousandth of an inch in size, very small particles. Particles can aggravate and trigger respiratory conditions, like Dr. Pang told us, such as asthma, bronchitis, heart conditions such as cardiac arrhythmia, heart, which is heartbeat irregularities, and cause heart attacks. People with heart and lung disease, the elderly, the kapuna, the children, are at the highest risk. I'd like you to remember that through the rest of this talk. So, why should you be concerned about health and environmental effects? Well, the EPA tells us that tens of thousands of premature deaths occur from soot every year in the United States. Thanks, Mary Miss Ring Wynn, for uh, this nice picture. This is uh, driving through the smoke. Uh, this is uh, on the way to Hana. And uh, in fact, these things flying around, these are soot and ash, and the rest is smoke. Particulate matter. Repeatedly, over and over, scientific studies have linked particulate matter with huge health problems, premature death, respiratory hospital admissions, emergency room visits. Uh, yesterday I was talking to somebody at work and she said, oh yeah, my neighbor, her, her son went to the hospital the other day. How many people in here have known somebody that's gone to the hospital from a cane burn? Wow, wow, that's wrong. It aggravates asthma. Acute respiratory symptoms, aggravated coughing, like our teachers and, and, and nurses, sorry, our teacher and nurse were talking about before, coughing all day, it's no fun. Chronic bronchitis, decreased lung function, shortness of breath. And then on the economic side, work and school absences, are we not even gonna let our kids go and, and try to learn at school? Can they at least go to school? I'm sorry, I'll try to keep it on science here. The Department of Health Air Surveillance and Analysis section collects measurements of ambient pollutants, including particulate matter. So today I'm going to ask the question, are the particulate matter, uh, particulate matter monitors on Maui, say it three times fast, right? <laughs> are they effective for PM transient events, these burns, like we routinely suffer? By routinely, I mean up to six days a week, ten months a year. Sometimes twice a day, often. Well, let's examine the data. Here's the data from the air quality monitors on May 27th. Let's look at the Kihei air monitor. There are three for all of Maui, a drastic geospatial undersampling. And Kihei is this column, and they're measuring how many micrograms per cubic meter are picked up by this detector. 
And uh, that picture I showed you with the smoke everywhere, that was 200 feet from Common Lee Elementary School, taken at 7.58 a.m. I took it, and it says two micrograms per cubic meter. Well, on May 27th, when the children were choking and coughing, if you may have seen the video up here, a reading of 2.0 micrograms per cubic meter was recorded. That is excellent PM air quality. <laughs> yes. So, of course, the monitor was five miles away. Are the monitors effective for transient burn events? No. Well, let's just look at the data and, yeah, you're right, no. Current air monitors are virtually useless. Now, I know a bit about aerosols. I, I have measured them for NASA on a number of occasions, invented instruments for them. But just to be careful, I asked another NASA expert uh, in Washington, outside Washington, who's an expert on aerosols about burns and monitors. He asked that I not use his name. And he said, unless the PM ground instruments can be positioned just right, they won't help with point source events like that. It's common sense. PM monitors were really built to provide long-term monitoring of exposure to PM 2.5 and 10 particles. These are particles that are anywhere from a 10,000th to four 10,000th of an inch in size, for those of you who don't, don't like metric. Um, and they are not, I repeat, not short-term focused plume hazards. They are not for short-term focused plume hazards. They are for long-term average monitoring. And people at the EPA know this, and people at, the NASA, at NASA know this, and I know this, and we know it doesn't work for this. He also said for things like this, a mobile setup is needed. Or in the fields being burned, if they are well known, then we need to position semi-permanent ground instruments appropriately. Okay, let's go to a new topic. We know the burn monitors are worse than useless. They're misleading. HCNS claims from their website they're protecting the INA, that they're growing sugarcane and it removes carbon dioxide, the most abundant greenhouse gas from the atmosphere. So I actually spent several years doing modeling and greenhouse effect for NASA. Uh, the actual truth is that's very misleading because the CO2 is released when the cane is burned or eaten or anything is done with it. The process uses fossil fuels for fertilizers and equipment. It's a carbon positive process. So let's not try to fool people on websites. Let's just be honest. Here's a little factoid on burning. On Earth, burning biomass, including agricultural waste, produces 40% of the world's carbon dioxide, 32% of the carbon monoxide, which is toxic, 20% of the particulate matter, 50% of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. I'm gonna tell you all about those. You're gonna learn some science tonight. So let's not even pretend that growing cane helps the environment. Okay, some science. What is burning? Burning is combustion of a high temperature chemical reaction. It's a high temperature chemical reaction between a fuel and an oxidant, usually oxygen, but not always. It produces oxidized, often gaseous products in a mixture called smoke. What is smoke? Smoke is a collection of airborne solid and liquid particles, aerosols, these are particles that float in the air, and gases emitted when the material undergoes combustion, along with the air it's mixed into. And so see, here we see a picture of smog. This, is, again, was taken 200 feet from the elementary school. So what is partial combustion? Thank you, Dr. Pang, for mentioning that. Very important. Complete combustion is total oxidation of the material, and it's almost impossible uh, to achieve. It takes a special chemical equilibrium. You put catalytic converters in your car to get closer to it so you have less smog. Partial combustion is when you have unburnt project, products, such as carbon monoxide, hydrogen, carbon, soot, or ash. These things are left over. And partially combusted smoke materials are usually toxic and contain unburned and partially oxidized products. So I have here pictures taken of four different flames. Can anybody tell me which one uh, has the partial combustion? Yes, right, thank you very much. How can you tell? Well, this combustion is so good in here, you see almost nothing. It's almost complete oxidation. This is what we see all the time. This is partial combustion. A little more on partial combustion, then we're going to go to another topic. Any combustion at high temperatures in atmospheric air, which is mostly nitrogen, it's about 80% nitrogen, about 20% oxygen, roughly, um, produces nitrogen oxide pollutants, which we commonly call NOx, or for those of you, I hear, keep hearing LA tonight, uh, it's called smog. And so smog has indirect effects on the ozone layer. 
It has direct cardiovascular respiratory illness effects, increases in mosquitoes, restricted swimming, fewer fish, toxic shellfish, well water contamination, NOx is bad. Dark smoke indicates partial combustion. So what is in this cane smoke? What are you breathing, Maui? Well, besides the normal oxidation products like water and carbon dioxide, what else are you breathing? Well, among other things, things naturally produced are things called POMs, polycyclic organic molecules. I'm not gonna give you a whole chemistry lesson here, but this is important, so I'm gonna take a minute on it. POMs are organic molecules produced by incomplete combustion. They have individual benzene rings. They are typically toxic. This one up on the right here, BAP, is the most cancer-causing toxic substance that's found in cigarettes. Well, you know what? It's also found in the smoke that you breathe. Palms cause cancer. Polycyclic organic matter is bad for you. Please try not to breathe it. I mean, assuming you have a choice, which unfortunately we don't. Benzoapyrene, the palm I showed you in the upper hand, right hand corner a second ago, is the most car carcinogenic substance in cigarette smoke. That's, that's all I can say about that. BAP can be found in cane smoke and it gets converted to a nasty mutagen in your body. What is a mutagen? A mutagen is something that changes your DNA, that mutates your DNA. Uh, I know the other medical doctors in the audience know all about mutagens and carcinogens. It's a bad combination. BAP and DNA really is not a good combination. Here's the BAP, here's the DNA. DNA works like this. It's coiled up, it unwinds, each side replicates, you make, and then it pairs and you get two strands. Well, how does BAP cause mutations in your DNA? It's really very interesting. I'm just gonna say you start with BAP, you go through a chemical process in your body, and it forms what's called a DNA adduct. A DNA adduct is a piece of DNA bonded to your DNA. It's, it's a piece of DNA that is bonded to a cancer-causing chemical. Adducts lead to errors in DNA replication and increased risk of cancer. It's that simple. This process can be the start of a cancerous cell or carcinogenesis. Here's an example of the BAP epoxide uh, tying up the DNA so it can't unravel correctly, so it doesn't reproduce correctly. This process could be the start of, and you know, don't take my word for it. Let's, let's uh, here just again quote the EPA. The process could be the start of cancer, persistent effects on development and function of your immune system, reduced fertility and offspring during adulthood following BAP exposure when you're pregnant. Um, this is from the US EPA. On Maui, everyone is a smoker, whether they like it or not. And, and I'm really uh, interested to later hear thoughts on this because there's a new law so there's no smoking at the beach. <laughs> HRS 328J, I think it is, I don't remember, it's been a long time since I read it, said, oh, you can't smoke within 20 feet of a building? What a, and, and we'll let the cane smoke just blow right through. Cane smoke contains glass particles. Do you like breathing glass? There's fine biogenic silica fibers in sugar cane. This is more than a possible hazard. Here are pictures of glass formed by burning cane. And these little ones here um, are PM 2.5 particles. This is 100 microns, this is 10 microns on this scale. There are lots of these in the air wafting around and you can breathe them. I don't think it's right to force people to breathe glass. So I have a quiz for you. So see if you've been paying attention here. Um, which is worse to breathe, fiberglass, angel hair wool glass, you know, like uh, you do Christmas ornaments out of, uh, amosite, I have pictures of some of these, asbestos, or biogenic cane glass? Anybody? Well, it's a trick question, because fiberglass and angel hair wool glass are the same material. Um, and then amosite is one of six types of the asbestos. So there are several different minerals. And the answer is, um, I don't know. Do you know what's worse to breathe, asbestos or cane? I, I don't know. Does the Department of Health know? Do, do you know Dr. Peng? Uh, I don't know which, thank you. I, you know, I don't know either. Should I have to breathe any of them? I don't think so. 
Okay, let's transition to a new topic. What's in your air? HCNS claims no herbicides are used. So this is from the website. Um, it says, government applied herbicides are used to control weeds and they're only applied during the first six months. This is from the HCNS website. And uh, from the Maui News, I, I quote Rick Volner, the general manager, uh, saying that Pilato is sprayed as a ripener prior to harvest. To, it browns the king. Pilato is, is essentially Roundup. Um, it's an herbicide. So this is just wrong. I don't know why their website says that. I'm sure they'll fix it. Uh, thank you, Dr. Green, Senator Green, for coming. He's going to uh, talk in a little bit. Um, I put in a few things on glyphosate because I, I know that Senator Green's interested in glyphosate. I am too. Lauren Pang, a consultant for the United Nations World Health Organization, who worked for them for many years, will tell you that who just declared glyphosate a probable human carcinogen. And it's a systemic herbicide that enters through the leaf blade and it's translocated. It moves through the shoot and to the root. And so it doesn't just wash off. It becomes part of the plant. Glyphosate kills by inhibiting binding of an enzyme responsible for making needed chemicals. Um, here's a, an approved list of chemicals applied by HCNS to the cane. Uh, let's see. Glyphosate, glyphosate, glyphosate. I, I won't even say which ones are worse. I mean, this, this is just one view graph on, for the glyphosate section of the talk. Um, but there's a lot of glyphosate and, and a lot of other things like atrazine, which is known to cause birth defects and has contaminated the water supply. The Department of Health will confirm that. HCNS claims that by the time the crop is harvested, this herbicide is non-existent. Well, the truth is it's sprayed just prior to harvesting. It translocates, like I told you, and Roundup is being burned and you're breathing that smoke. Uh, I run a lab, and so we're required for chemicals to have things called an MSDS, a material safety data sheet. And so I was wondering, is it safe to burn Roundup? It's a reasonable question. And so uh, I downloaded the material safety data sheet. Uh, chemical dangers decomposes on heating, producing toxic fumes, including things that attack iron and galvanized steel. Gee, what does it do to your lungs? I don't know. Um, doesn't say that. Uh, and fire, it gives off irritating or toxic fumes. Uh, I had somebody say to me recently, oh, it's completely oxidized. Well, I, I saw the brown bloom. Um, are there autoimmune disorders caused by this? I don't know. Uh, there have been cases of people exposed to burning glyphosate uh, that have gotten autoimmune disorders. I'm going to skip that. What else is in cane smoke? Well, just ask the EPA. Phenol, which causes cancer. Toluene. It irritates the respiratory tract. Naphthalene, irritating to the eyes. Benzene causes anemia, leukemia, cancer. Hydrazines, um, lung and liver tumors. Uh, and for those of you who follow space stuff like I do, it's also a hypergolic rocket fuel and considered very toxic. Um, hexanol, nerve damage. What else is in cane smoke? Herbicides, acids, ferans, ketones, alcohols, aromatics. Aromatics, that sounds nice. Um, they're actually the really nasty things with all the benzene rings. I won't even go through that. Uh, I just talked about glyphosate. This other stuff is far worse than cancer-causing glyphosate. Again, here's the approved list of chemicals applied by HCNS. Um, we did an analysis of some of the soot and ash that was a result of the May 27 burn. I won't go into those details tonight because it was 106 pages long. So I'm, I'm going to try to keep this short, and I decided we, we won't go into it tonight. I'm not going to discuss the cane migraines that so many of you have reached out to me. And say, raise your hand. Have you had a cane, migra a cane grain? Wow. How many of you have had cane grains? I'm sorry, put up your hands again. Okay, so it triggers migraines. You know, uh, that's, just, that's just mean. Um, okay, so I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, as people said before, history, Department of Health banned, said they were going to ban cane burning in 1971. But in mean, the newspaper article, it said it wondered if the 1974 deadline could be met. What do you think? <laughs> I guess not. That was 44 years ago. But it's okay, because HCNS in 1999 predicted the end of cane burning. The plantation plan to reinvent itself. Okay, I'm sorry, I should keep this on science. It's just, uh, these are facts. This is the Maui News reporting this. And, and I've just got to say, you know, I have a, a good Irish friend in the audience, and they have the saying, fool me once, shame on me. You know, fool me 10 times, like, just somebody call bullshit. 
right? HCNS's good neighbor policy says they want to be a good neighbor and, and they recognize that smoke aggravates problems. And that's why they make an effort to alert neighbors when a harvest is scheduled nearby. So thanks for the text message, HCNS. I feel so safe now. <laughs> the event of May 27th was not isolated. It was a month ago. In fact, it's not even rare. We have had, well, I had 13. I haven't updated the view graph. We've had over 13 illegal permit violations of ground level smoke since just a month ago, more children have gone to the emergency room, ones I personally know, ones that work with people. A again, how many of you know somebody who's gone to the emergency room for this? Okay, uh, enough said. We really are grateful you're here. We hope the DOH and EPA will act. Now, it's been a long time since I taught. I'm going to end up my talk here, but I'm going to give you a little quiz. Uh, and the, the question I'm going to ask tonight is, which of these are bad to breathe? See if you're paying attention. Palms and soot, benzoapyrene, hydrazine, rocket fuel, glyphosate, Roundup, atrazine, nitrous oxide, sorry, not nitrous oxide, NOx, smog, biogenic cane glass. What's the answer? All of the above. The science case is clear. The human case is clear. How many children have to go to the hospital before somebody's going to take care of this? The right to burn ends where your right to breathe begins. You have a right to clean air. Thank you very much.